These interview questions are related to your experiences dealing with incarceration. Whether you've dealt with doing time or know someone in jail, please share a video telling your story with Care Pictures Love in order to inform others on how to deal with similar situations and prevent the next generation from making the same mistakes in life. What is your name? My name is John Roy Rogers. And where are you from? Born and raised in Tacoma, California. And what do you do for a living? Okay, now that we have a little background, let's get into how incarceration has affected your life. At what age were you first impacted by incarceration? 18. And what happened in that situation? I was taken, uh, my opportunity for life was taken away. I mean, I got sentenced to 16 months for a crime I didn't commit. Um, for I violated two uh, knowledge of another inmate's dad. You know, but then when down here, set a price for me to just make wrong decisions in life. Mm. And they're based on what I wanted to do. I thought I could. I could not do. And um, how did you end up... Can you elaborate a little bit more since you said you didn't do anything? It was based on the fact that uh, the association with people who was doing did a crime. And I stood by, watched it happen. Then I initiated getting rid of the stuff instead of doing the actual crime, makes me, which makes me still a part of the crime. Mm. You know, so my accuser had said that I, I did it and put it on me. So I tried to take a deal for the lesser part of the crime, which was receiving and selling stolen property. And then find out that I, by not being able to read and write, I was tricked into signing away my right to due process. Mm. That's terrible. I'm sorry that that happened. Mm. And um, how did this change your life? Once I got to the prison that I got 16 months to, I realized I didn't know how to read and write. That's what brought to my attention that I got there with the scientists. So I tried to learn how to read and write while I was in jail and basically learn what I can through what the institution had to offer me. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, so what was it like being in jail for the first time? Well, actually it was just an experience, learning experience for me. And um, how were you treated by the staff? Well, in most cases, disregard for who I was um, and disrespected, you know, um, indifference. Most of them just didn't care. They just like, you know, here to get their checks and go home. Um, I don't want to say racially motivated, but just when I say discriminatory practices was done. Mm. And can you elaborate on some of these situations? Kind of humiliate you. Yeah, try to humiliate you. Yeah, exact words. So try to humiliate you. So then you, when you, when you fail against the humiliation, then you find I find myself caught up in another situation. I'm in the hole with some staff, you know, for, for no reason. Actually, there was at many times there was no assault, just by being accused of assault and staff. Mm -hmm. You know, cost me more time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because of something that the officer wanted me to do or respond to. 
So let me ask you, um, during this time, uh, did you have contact with your family through correspondence, collect calls and visits? On my first, first time, no. Um, I corresponded with my little sister once every few months. Um, let her back, well, I might call my mom once every few months if she accepted the call. Mm -hmm. We don't have a close family family like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the little contact that you did have, um, what did it do for you? Well, it inspired me. It gave me hope, you know, to look forward to. You know, it was good to have somebody around so I could talk to or, we, or hear from every now and then. It was like, you know, cause is like this, man. You sitting in the 6 by 12 cell 26 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can experience that on the streets. You go in your bathroom and sit there all day. You get the door shut and listen to your household go by without you having involved in none of the shows, the programs, the meals, and none of that. And you pretty much can experience that same feeling that right there but you're not it's like being alive or dead mm. you know so you're missing in that sense mm. so even though um you don't have a close-knit family how did your incarceration affect your family you know i couldn't say how did it affect them because they never talked about it mm -hmm. what are some of the things you've seen while incarcerated Good, bad, anything you want the people to know about that they don't know about? You know, good things I've seen is people make it home. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, do good things to get to where they get close to going home. The bad things I've seen, you know, I've seen people get mistreated by staff or by other inmates as well. You know, um, you got people that, is, that don't know how to socialize. Seeing some incredible things up in there, you know, you just get survived up in there six years. And um, what are some of the good things people can do to make it home? You keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut and stay out of people's business. Mm, that's true. And um, experiencing and seeing these things, how did it affect you personally? situations that they had no other way to get out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a lot of, yeah, just in the survival of the fittest. You know, you got to use your head up in situations. And what is it that you want people to know about being incarcerated? Being incarcerated, man, you know, it just ain't the place to be. I mean, if you're going to be incarcerated, utilize this time trades and education programs that they do have that you can use on the street and you know you ask you will find them you know they got the, they got the programs here for you now you know so you just got to get get your head right into it um stay up out of everybody else's business and keep them up out of yours you know and then you know key thing like i said before keep your eyes and ears open and your mouth shut and stay out of trouble you know what i mean when you up in here you missing your family and your freedom, you know, you, you will learn to respect and appreciate it a lot more than you were when you were out there. You know, just sit, just sit in the rock, just go in the field, just go in the field with dirt and rock and just sit there all day and then think about being caged in all the rest of your life right there in that area. Just to have a talk with a rock sitting in the mud, have where it can emerge from the dirt. Ask that rock, where have you been in his life? How, what have he seen over the years and the days and the time? The storms, the rain, and everything that people have walked over that rock and just stuck there. You know, that's like being in prison. You can't move. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Better yet, go to uh, the zoo. Go to a zoo. Look at a orangutan or a gorilla in a cage of steel or concrete. Just look in his eye and imagine yourself being in the same, same, same situation from the day you was born to the day you would die, knowing yourself over the wall behind him is a whole world going on without you. Mm. That's deep. And what is it that you want people to know about you? Me, I'm a straight up person. You know, I got 
care. I care about I care for people. You know, um, you know, I'm a kind hearted person. I'm not the criminal that the society wants to paint just because I got a conviction of criminal record. Don't make me a, a bad person. You know, I broke some rules. I paid the consequence. But at the same time, you know, I got a good heart. I give my shirt to my, my last to anybody that need it. You know, that's those two values I was raised on. You know, things like that. Have you received pictures from family and friends while incarcerated? Yes, I have. And what did those pictures do for you? I mean, receiving them, they're, they're good to get. You know, for me, I look at them and like, wow, Christmas time. There's some tree, there's my dog, there's my grandkids. You know, they're having a ball out there. When was the last time I was out there for Christmas? You know, and I look at the vacations that go on out there, some jet skiing and everything. You know, pictures are good to get here, you know, for a moment. You know, in reality check, you look at them, you say, a picture tells us a thousand stories. When I look at my pictures, I get to 999 stories. One story is missing. It's that story of me being right beside them people in that picture. Would you say that those pictures give you something to look forward to? That's right. How often do you look at your pictures? Uh, rarely. Probably once every other month. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Um, based on the fact that... Heads up. What plans do you have for the future? Um, get out and enjoy time with my grandkids and my kids to make up for time that I miss with them. second granddaughter to play with them and have them put their sticky hands and fingers all in my face and on my clothes and share the lollipop they didn't share it with the dogs the cats and the carpet and everything in between offer something to come and <laughs> that's right that's right so um i want to thank you for doing this interview with care pictures love and keys boom tv and uh, we wish you all the success in life and in the future and get up out of here and stay up out of here all right, you have a good one. My people, we're going to put